So hello and welcome back to another coin video. My name is Glenn and in Guma D we're looking at some German coins. So I'll be going through this. Um, most of them look like standard issue. Uh, and they're from all periods. So you've got the German Empire. You have East Germany. You have West Germany or later just unified Germany. Uh, and we have the Third Reich. Okay, so we're missing some. We're missing Weimar Republic. So it's in between World War One and World War Two. So I'll unpack these and we'll have a look at what we have. Okay, so this is the way I like to get coins. Uh, so you get actual coin folders and you cut them up and you send them like this. This is the most economical way of sending them because two by twos can actually get quite heavy. And these ones are pretty thin. A lot of them are flexible. And you can actually see through it. Okay, so, okay. So the first coin we have is a 10 Deutschmark. So these, it's a standard, I think it's 62.5% silver. And this one is dated. 1972. So this is the German Olympics. These sell for roughly about $20 each. Uh, maybe if I turn off the light, get better. Yeah, that's okay. Need to actually turn it around. So, uh, now I think there's like four or five of these. I can't remember. I need to actually look it up on Numistar. Okay, so they issued seven different types of coins. And this was a single year issue. Uh, 1987 was when they restarted to issue the 10 Deutschmarks uh, because they changed the 5 Deutschmarks to a copper nickel coin uh, so they can issue the uh, normal commemorative coins along with the actual normal circulating 5 Deutschmark coin. And this had a mintage of about 4,850,000 for each mint mark. Mint mark you can find is there, so this is F, and the F mint mark is uh, Stuttgart. So there's four there's Munich, Stuttgart, Karlsruhe, so Stuttgart and Karlsruhe in Baden Württemberg, and Munich. Oh no, not Munich, Hamburg. I already said Munich. God, what else? What else? Oh, dementia. Okay, so th then we have some standard coins from. Germany, so this is the last issue. Uh, so here's a five Deutschmark from Munich. Do we have a one Deutschmark? Uh, yeah, we have first year of issue, and it's hard to get out. So we don't have any two Deutschmarks to go with this lot. So I'm going to pull some out somewhere. This is from Munich as well. Then we have a 10 Fennig. So it's a 10 Fennig here. I reckon Australia should actually change the coins to be like this. This is more practical for uh, currently what our coins are. And it has an oak. So it's 1970. Okay, let's uh, take them out. It's 1973. Or 78, was it? Yeah, 78. Uh, first year, 19. 49 Bank Deutschlander. So you can see there's two differences. In 1950, they changed the Bundesrepublik Deutschland when Germany actually took over the issuance of currency from the elite occupiers. So there's that one. And you'll notice is that on the side, this is steel. So you can see it's going black, so it's corroding. So here's a 5 Fennig, also Bank Deutschlander. Then. We have a two Fennig. So this is quite similar to the five. So I wouldn't be surprised if it during the time period and you get confused, but this is copper plated steel. I think initially it was uh, just bronze. And this is brass plated steel, so slightly different metals. And this one is green, so it's got bronze disease. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Pretty common coins. And then we have two other coins of this issue. So we have a one Fennig, the smallest denomination, and a 50 Fennig. So this is also 1949. 
pretty common. The key date you want to get for this is 1950, which uh, they think was mint sport because it wasn't supposed to be minted. And oh, there's two more coins of this series. So here we just have the normal shoe, 1989. Uh, G, obviously, the steel is pretty, uh, covering on the steel is pretty thin. And a J from 1969. So, these are pretty much not worth much. But, the good thing is, is that if you've got these and you're in Germany, you can still exchange them at the Bundesbank. Four euros. And a few years ago, um, the telecommunications was allowing you to use one Deutschmark coins as one euro to use in payphones okay so there is only there's four coins from east germany east germany coins are not that popular uh, so here and most of them are aluminium so here we have a large 1977 one mark so that was Officially, it had the same exchange rate as a one Deutschmark, but because it's a communist country, they would have had different exchange rates for different purposes. Okay, here's a 20 Fennig 1983. So this is the uh, brass coin. It's the only coin that wasn't made out of aluminium in circulation at the time. Although they did issue a 50 Fennig in uh, brass in 1950. Here's a 10 and a 1 Fennig. So, quite nice. And, uh, does they have it here? No, they didn't. So they've got two different versions of the obverse sides. So this is the front of the coin, the coat of arms of East Germany. Yeah, so those coins, you know, probably, you know, just like a dollar reach for those ones. Okay, let's have a look at the German Empire coins. So, oh yeah. And the best ones I'll leave for last because you know they're very interesting. So what we have here, we have a few coins. So we've got two silver coins down below, uh, 1974. So the smallest denomination we have a bronze two fenny from 1875. And this one is, is that a B or A? Uh, these are quite worn, so it's a bit hard to actually tell. Okay, it looks like a B. So a B mint mark at the time is for Hanover. So, and that had a mintage of, uh, oh, let me have a look, uh, 15 million, about 16 million. So it's not a scarce coin to get. It'll be hard to get in uncirculated condition. So in this condition, you know, worth about a dollar or two. Then we have two fenny, five fennigs. So uh, Germany issued the high copper content coins up until 1916, 1915, 16. Then they changed to, so this is iron. You can tell it's iron. So you can tell it's iron just based on the colour. Iron doesn't actually, uh, doesn't last the time pretty well. And these were issued up into 1922. And here we have the copper nickel coin. Another difference you can tell is where they actually put fennig and the actual date. But on the obverse side, it looks pretty much the same. And they're both milled. So, uh... Those ones are probably only worth a dollar two. Need to check the mint marks as well. That looks like Berlin. That looks like Stuttgart. So I need to check the mintage for those ones. Then we have you know, a half and one mark. So the one mark was the highest coin issued by the federal German government. Uh, two marks to 20 marks, they were issued by the states. So uh, there's a lot more variety in the high denominations than these ones and the half mark was first issued in 1906 before this date they were actually called 50 fenny coins and this one is a 
Oh, it's a Berlin mint mark, so it's going to be a quite common. 29 million of those minted. And this one is a silver value of uh, about $2.80. So, you know, a small coin, but it still has a, a high silver value compared to today's currency. Then we have the one mark. Oh, one thing I probably haven't said is that the first coins were issued in uh, 1873. But they didn't really replace the state coins probably till way later. So this one's 1874. D mint mark had a mintage of about 7 million. So, you know, this one's probably about $10 to $15 coin. Yeah, I wouldn't. Very good to find maximum fine. I wouldn't. Definitely not a very fine coin. Okay. So then we have these coins. This is a one rice penny from uh, it says 1940 but it's actually hard to see what the actual mint mark is uh, looks quite corroded it might be a g so uh, this one's probably worth just junk value 1940 are actually quite normal this has probably been in the ground for quite a while uh, based on the type of corrosion that you can see on it where the coin has just been flaking off so it's typical corrosion when it's actually in the ground. Then we have a two rice mark. So this one is 1938. So what you're looking for these is error coins. Um, so this is the issue with the German swastika. And on the back of the coin it has Paul von Hindenburg. And this one was minted in Vienna. And these were minted from 1936. So 1936 are the harder years to get and also expensive uh, to uh, 1938 or 39 should I say. And this coin is a mintage of 13 million so it shouldn't be too hard to get. A lot of these were hoarded during the Second World War. And obviously the detail is pretty good so they didn't see that much circulation. Uh, being, you know, a high value coin at the time. So that's quite a nice coin. These cost between uh, probably $20 to $30 in this condition. Okay, the next one we have. So this is my favourite a lot. And I'm not too sure. I need to check it up where it's from. One thing, 1861. Uh, so I'll do that before we talk more about it. But the interesting one, this is probably most expensive. This is probably cost about, oh, I've seen it for sale for about 70 to 100 dollars and this one is a um it's a donation coin so you have a swastika underneath a 50 so it's 50 wolfen fennig if you donated 50 reich fennigs and on the back it has a portrait of adolf hitler so am i interested in this coin no not really uh, I just wanted to flog it off to someone who actually wants it. So this is not really a coin. It's more like a, a token or, yeah, just a, a donation token or just a receipt pretty much. And these are pretty scarce. I think they'll issue between 1933 and 36. And then they issued have our tokens. Okay, so this one's 2.4 grams, 15 millimeters, and it's made out of copper. And it says on the it says it's a, a, a promotional item issued by. Ooh, who is that issued by? Okay, metal orientation. Okay, it says that one. Restorer, yeah. Reading proper order, obviously people read it wrong. Um, I too have helped 50 offering Phoenix, so yeah. Okay, and then it's got information that it's not associated with violence, it's just a token. And you can get them in the 30 Ufa Phoenix and one Mark Ufa Spender. So 936, 38. Here's a sale, uh, $54 plus buyer's premium. So the cats are auctions. So that's a very, eh, for me, not that interesting. But it was just the reason why I actually had to purchase 
this lot, uh, you know, I like money, but I also like making more money. Uh, so, but this one, this one I'm going to keep because that's why, another reason why I purchased it, pretty much for this one. You have a coins, so yeah, not really that interested in. So look, just look this coin up. It's uh, Bavaria, should have seen that, had the Bavarian coat of arms. And this grade, I would say it's probably extremely fine to almost uncirculated. So there is no mintage figure for 1861. Uh, and also the value that I see mostly for, you know, very fine to extremely fine. So I think that this one uh, probably has a value of about 20 to $30 in this condition. Most of the $10 ones are usually lower grade. So that's actually quite a nice coin. And it's pro the only one I'm actually going to keep. Anyway, I hope this helps you with your coin collecting. Especially German coins. They seem to be popular, especially in Germany. Haha, uh -huh, wonder why. You know? But obviously you've got a lot of different varieties. And I'm only missing the Weimar Republic out of this coin set. So thank you very much and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.